All right, and it's time to go live. But there's a major delay, so you're going to be sitting here watching me do weird shit for about 30 seconds. <laughs> it is Monday, and we already have comments. <laughs> uh, I have 10 minutes to give questions I ask. I always have questions for Michael. Yes, you do, Diana. Hi. Shadow jumps in my lap as soon as I sit down. So today we're going to be doing just a, an AMA. I'm going to pick out some questions from uh, the channel that I probably already answered on videos, but I thought, you know what, let's go ahead and answer them anyway. I used to do videos like this um, back in the day. I do them on Fridays, but they weren't really getting a lot of views, so I stopped doing it. But I figured, no, if I'm doing this I'm from the comments, oh, fuck, Jesus, you are shedding so bad. <laughs> ah. Figure since I'm doing it on the um, from the comments, I'll also pick up some questions from Chad, which I don't know if I've ever done this way. I was hoping to get like pictures of the questions and then just throw them to you, but that would require a hell of a lot of planning because I need to pick, take a image of each individual one, which is why I used to do it as video. But we're not doing that this time around. Hello, Diana. She says, ahoy. And you know what? Where's the brush? No idea. Let's see if... You know, I think the kids took off with it. Dang it. <sighs> Wish people would just leave my stuff alone. Hey, Neo, how's it going? Hi. I figured we'd give, uh, give this a few minutes before we jump into questions and stuff. So if you have some questions, if you want to... Hold off on just a moment. Um, I'm going to go through a few from the comment section here of my videos. Um, I have some uh, on a side note. Uh, um, I wonder if are there any held for review. Oh, look at that. Yes. Spam. <laughs> look, they blocked words. That's not even a word. I don't even know what the hell that is. Um, all right, this report is spam. That's spam. Um, that is not spam. Why... It's not letting me approve it, but there's nothing wrong with that one. That was 10 days ago. Now I feel bad. <laughs> um, okay, so she did write that on... Oh! Okay, the, the comment she made on another video. I don't know why it's... This one won't... Huh. Yeah, well... It's YouTube. What do you expect? Just an update, Michael. I moved into my house. It's so lovely here. There have been issues, though. The bathroom flooded. Uh oh. Also, they are repainting the interior, so that's so that's taking a while. Well, you know, bathroom flooding is never a good thing. <laughs> Luckily, I haven't had any floods. Knock on wood. Huh. Yeah, we haven't had any major problems. How's your tooth doing? She's got a little bit of a, an infection on her tooth going on. I've been giving her some antibiotics. I might have to take her into vet though. Maybe have it pulled. I thought it would be no fun now, is it? No. My little baby girl. It's not as poofy as it was though. Aside from the mishaps, welcome home. Yeah. I, I prefer living in the house. I we bought this one, so this one's mine. Mine, mine, mine. I figured out what I'm doing, what I'm going to do with my three rooms: bedroom, office, and studio for my messy creative work. <laughs> hey, you know that's awesome. Bedroom, office. I used to have an office. <laughs> I have one, two, three bedrooms up here. Gave one to me. 
had an office, gave it to Sam, had another bedroom, and I gave it to the girls. My house, and I can't even enjoy most of it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all good. Joys of having family, I guess. Kids. Come here. Come on, just reach up here. Yeah. Yeah, she was really purring today on today's video. Um, okay, we're going to give it a few more minutes. See if anybody else comes moseying on in. I'm trying to see if there's any other pertinent questions I can add here. I've got a couple so far. Ow. that one uh, quite a few comments but not a lot of questions though um, Michael, that's like an evil Hawaiian shirt. Not really. It's, it is tigers and flowers. Not evil. It's multicolor. more comments than I think I do. I responded just about every one of them though, so. Um, got a lot of them are just like, thanks for this. <laughs> Handy tutorial. <laughs> Not a lot of questions. So either I answer things fairly well and people don't need to know any information or um, Nobody cares to ask. <laughs> so. Oh, that was a post. Wow. Really need to start doing more of those, huh? Uh, community posts. Uh, what's up, everyone? Hey, what's up, Chris? How's it going, buddy? Um... Ow! Don't poke me. Okay, so there's there's a few I guess I can pull out of the comment section. I'm down to like two months ago. But here here's an example from two months ago. You solved my problem in ten minutes. Well crafted, edited, an accurate video. Thanks. Subscribed. <laughs> That's <laughs> that seems to be the vast majority of the shit that I do. So maybe uh maybe I just answer people's questions right off the bat on the video. Wish, uh, I guess that's a good thing. Hmm. Um, how are you finishing for questions this week? Um, I am looking, yeah, I'm going through the comment section of YouTube at the moment. Uh, I didn't see anything about it, sorry. Um, yeah, I, well, if, unfortunately you don't, no, I, actually I didn't post anything on Twitter either. <laughs> No, I just figured we'd do a, a, Q, a, a, a an AMA tonight, and I would pull questions from comment section, and if anybody else had any questions they'd like to ask. Um, it was kind of like last minute type thing. Uh, like you said that you blocked out two hours for Kingmaker. Has that been beneficial in balancing all of your other projects? Yes. God, yes. <laughs> I'm actually getting work done on it. And today I actually got it, uh, chapter one, on... Uh, for monthly Buy Me A Coffee supporters, you can now access Chapter 1 of Kingmaker. The link is in the post, or the email the guys got. So, 
Oh, but yeah, two hours good is a good chunk of time. Usually in about an hour and a half, I can crank out about 2,000 words. So uh, two hours will be more than enough to get it done by the end of the month. I'm hoping. So. Uh, oh, people. Hello, Ron. You give out. You give a lot of information in your videos, Michael. I, I no, I try. <laughs> I just I don't want to leave people hanging on stuff. I'm like, did I cover everything that this tool does? You are covering me in hair. Um, is there anything that breaks on it? Is there anything you need to worry about? Well, I'm I'm pretty thorough, but yeah, you know, I guess that's a good thing. I won't I won't complain. Um, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> um, oh, here's one from iOS Computing Solutions. The talking is too much. Next time, add more practicals. This was on the reality of AdSense earnings for 1,000 visitors. Apparently, I talked too much. So I was going to reply to him. You'd hate the live streams then. <laughs> but I thought, nah, fuck it. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, you can't troll me, guys. I don't give a shit. So here's one from Ron. Great scenery. Dry as a bone, but great scenery. Yeah. In, in Colorado, it, get, it will get dry. Colorado blows Texas out of the water when it comes to scenery. Yeah, we've got some beautiful mountains up here. Like, uh, that was on the um, getting the ebook pictures uh, from Lookout Mountain. And if you haven't seen that video, it's an amazing video. It was one of the funnest videos I ever made. <laughs> and it's like one of the poorest performing ones, too. I liked it. I even added music from Clue to it. <laughs> um, oh, wow, well, I'm behind here. Uh, hey, Lonesome Lenny's here. Hi, dropping in to say hello. How's it going, Lenny? Uh, American Music Awards, cool. I want to win Best New Rap Artist. American... Oh, Amy. Uh -huh. <laughs> it took me a second. <laughs> Had to process the information. Um, hi, Lenny. Got any writing related questions for Michael tonight? Hey, Doc. Hello there. Too much talking, man. Need to throw in more interpretive dance moves. Right? I don't know if I can do interpretive dance. Well, I could, but I highly doubt you'd be able to interpret it. <laughs> so, if that's even a word. Uh... You, you attracted the message, so I don't even know if it's a word. Interpretive? Yeah, interpretative. Oh. See, I even read it the correct way. <laughs> uh, you'll be proud of me. I'm eating a bowl of soup. Hey, I lost the first 40 pounds on nothing but progressive soup. So, yeah, I know the power of soup. I've been trying... Been trying to think if I want to write a book or have... A website and podcast first. Ooh, that's a good one. Okay, you know what? Let's start with that one, Lenny. Um, if you want to write a book or have a website or podcast first, so I, I think probably having the website going first has been very beneficial, especially with a, a freelancer's tale, because it allowed me to build up an audience, especially like with the YouTube channel. Uh, it allowed me to build up an audience as I was writing the book. So by the time I was able to publish it, I had more people who were potentially buy it. So it was like immediate, I wouldn't say immediate success, because I've only sold like 22 copies of my book so far. Half of those were the family on Facebook. <laughs> but now I have a website that generates, at the moment, I think I hit 4,000 visitors a month, and I'm trying to, I'm doing stuff to improve that. But it's automatically advertising for free off my blog so I don't have to spend any money for anybody to see those ads because um, it's my website and I can do whatever the hell I want so I suggest getting a blog going and building up traffic while you're writing the book because um, you might generate some interest there depending on what kind of book you're writing and uh, by the time you're ready to publish it you could have a few instant sales from people who follow your accounts so I'm a big fan of doing the website. As for a podcast, I do call this a podcast, even though I think Chris edited the first few, and I really haven't gone through and uploaded any in quite some time, because I, A, forget, B, don't have time. So, I'm going to try to get back on the ball with that, now that I have, like, half a year's worth of episodes ready. So, 
yeah. Um, the podcast, I'm not sure how to how to approach that one because I'm still pretty new to all that. But definitely for um, a blog. Oh, yeah. So definite blogs are, are, are a, a bonus there. Uh, good point. Thank you. You are very welcome, Lenny. Um, and there's all kinds of ways that you can promote your blog like I have on social media. I'm going to write a blog post about how to use social media to promote your blog without using social media. So you can create your account, but like with WordPress, you can set up Publicize to publish to, um, like mine go to LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter as soon as I hit the publish button. Automatically sends all that. Uh, I can customize the message, add any hashtags I want. It'll feed it directly from my website to those three social media sites. I don't even have to open Facebook, Twitter, or, in, or LinkedIn. It just goes automatic. So that's a good way to get um, to automate that part of the process. And then you also have tools like Buffer. I use Buffer for scheduling posts ahead of time. But once you start generating, um, or not generating, but once you start accumulating a fairly large audience, then especially people who care about what you're doing or who are really interested in what kind of book you're writing, you'll uh, definitely get some sales from that. So I'm... Um, very much pro blog. Um, looking for where was I? See, I keep coming. Here's a, here's some more that I've come across. Hi, I stumbled on your video. I've been thinking of publishing on Wattpad since my grammar is a little weak due to my disability. That is why I've been hesitant. Um, weak. Everybody starts out with weak, weak grammar. When I first started with a uh, uh, freelance writing in 2012 I didn't know the first thing about AP style English it took me a year and a half to make enough money to quit my full-time job but that's what Google's for um, pick to Google learn everything you possibly can um, I wanted to know if people can publish nonfiction on Wattpad as well yes um, you can publish pretty much anything on Wattpad uh, they do have a uh, um, a terms of service type thing you can't like post anything that's too graphic or um hate speech related uh stuff like that it's, uh, the normal shit that you'd come across essentially don't be a douche that's four live four words to live by but with wattpad you can do uh fan fiction i love doing fan fiction i have some plan for after i finish kingmaker i'm going to do some for fallout um and I do have a Star Trek fan fiction on there, uh, a What If Tale that I plan on um, expanding on. But yeah, you can nonfiction. I've seen recipe books on Wattpad, um, journals, poetry. Pretty much, you're quite open to what you can do on Wattpad. So that was from Mary Santosa. Um, let's see. Sometimes I like to throw in extra syllables just for shits and giggles. Don't we all? <laughs> Did you eat soup every day? Yes, for lunch and dinner, I had Progresso soup. Um, one of the cool things about it is that at the time I was doing it, Progresso had a huge, massive selection of soups you can pick. I'm partial to tomato rotini, but they stopped making it. Or at least they stopped selling it here in freaking Denver. So... Um, I'm a big fan of uh, the chicken noodles, like chicarena. Oh, good stuff. Um, Italian wedding. I had gumbo today. Um, tomato penne. I love tomato penne. Um, oh, somebody qu commented on building the Stargate last night. What the hell is that? <laughs> you have a slice of cake on top of a shake <laughs> okay looks good I'd still eat it but my god and they there's no wonder why Americans are overweight <laughs> because of shit like that <laughs> looks good though um, but yeah I ate soup every day um, for lunch and dinner uh, for breakfast um, I would have like eggs or, uh, I don't think I ate much cereal. I did have a lot of cream of wheat in the mornings. This was back in my cream of wheat days. And I, that's how I lost the first 40 pounds. Like, especially with soup, soup 
goes through you pretty fast. And so having soup for dinner is great. It's low on carbs, usually. Um, it's mostly water, which means you digest it a hell of a lot faster. And uh, it travels through your system quicker. So, um, yeah, a soup at night is awesome. Um, hello, Patrick. Hello, guys. Uh, my concept is specific. I am not trying to generate interest in a general audience, but seek out people who were, who were injured in a certain type of auto accident from a defective rear door. Um, you know what you could do is set up a blog about auto accidents in general and with a focus on defective hardware and that could lead you into all kinds of different things you can do with that plus you're um, focusing on a very specific audience um, which means they are going to be more likely to buy your stuff and click on ads and interact with your website but with it being a very super specific focused niche um It'll probably take a little bit longer to like see thousands of visitors a day, but the ones you get will probably be more active, uh, more comments, um, exploring the website more. So there is a, a pro and con to having a very specific niche. Why well, I don't think I can eat soup two times a day? Why? It's lunch and dinner. I liked progressive soup, <laughs> so I don't see it as a problem. Hey, Kitty C, how's it going? Did you eat anything else in addition to the soup? Nope. Just a can of Progresso. Um, guess who has a date with a cute girl coming up? Not this guy. <laughs> um, Lenny, that sounds like a great concept for a niche website. Right? Like 10 to 20 posts on that topic. Very targeted. Yeah, like I was saying. Like Lenny, what Michael has said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, you'd be super focused. Um, so try to see if there's any good key phrases you can wheedle into, um, to generate more traffic, but yeah, something like that, I bet it would do fairly well if, uh, auto accidents, defective gear, so, I bet there's all kinds of defective stuff on, like, airbags and shit, so. Uh, I've been eating yogurt and berries for lunch and dinner, regular breakfast though. I have been losing two pounds a day doing that. Awesome. I haven't lost shit. <laughs> I've been really bad for the past three days, but I'm getting back on the ball tomorrow, so. <sighs> Such is life. I didn't go like completely ballistic, but I did do more poor, more poorly than I would have liked. So, well, that's right. We got plenty of time still. Um, meet her at the gym. <laughs> you don't meet chicks at the gym. Okay, let's see what kind of questions we got here. Congratulations and greetings from Taipei. <laughs> um, that was from my first ebook. Um, uploaded to K blah, blah, blah. uploaded my first ebook to KDP. I think that was a short. Wow, so really not a lot of questions. It kind of makes me. See, yeah. Um, two pounds a day is a lot to lose. Uh, it's possible. It's probably not the most healthy, depending on what you're sacrificing. Like when you do fasting and all that, keep in mind that you will be also losing muscle mass. Um, looking for questions here. Oh, okay, here's one. Um, never mind. <laughs> I'm just too efficient. <laughs> hey, thank you for creating this. It's helpful. This is for the Mind Domo mind mapping and planning uh, video I did. Hey, Nat, how's it going? Um, would you say it's fine to focus on just getting an audience before thinking about money? Um, yes. Um, like when I built, uh, this YouTube channel, I'm, I'm still quite a ways away from monetizing, but the reason why I make all these videos is because I love to help people. I love, uh, well, my comment section is full of awesome, thank you for this, and like very few questions at all. Um, but yeah, I'd rather build an audience before even thinking about trying to monetize stuff because A, it doesn't make me look like a greedy douche, and B, 
I am more in it for the interaction. Um, sure, I would like to make money. I'd love my channel made money from the ads. But um, dealing with you guys talking and interacting with stuff, that's why I do what I do. So, yeah, I would say it's fine to focus on getting an audience before thinking about money. Um, I like fasting, dieting, talking. And she comes in for the, like, five seconds we're talking about it. <laughs> um, hey, Jacqueline, how's it going? Haven't seen you, around, haven't seen you on for a while. Um, I'm trying to find more questions here. Um, okay, you already said you might do a video on different tools and apps for writers, which I'm still working on. I'm just using the built-in notes app on my smartphone to write down ideas when I get them. Oh, using your smartphone <laughs> and Google Docs to write. Okay, that's something I'd watch, uh, something I want to watch. So I use LibreOffice. Um, like when I'm right now, I'm writing in LibreOffice, but I did start transferring uh, some of... Uh, Kingmaker to Google Docs. I'm going to start doing that with Despair as well. But I am still looking for some viable um, some viable apps, especially this week when I'm getting everything stuck on Barnes & Noble. So we're going to be selling books on the Nook. And so I need a, um, a free um, book formatting tool because Kindle Create only works for Amazon. You can't use them anywhere else. So that's where it's going to kind of suck. Um, blah, blah. It's all good. <laughs> I was injured in this defective auto door as a child. Ew. I could send you an article on my accident if interested. Um, I, I wouldn't know what to do with it. <laughs> like to read it just for hell of it or... Um, Maybe give my thoughts on it. I'm not sure what you're asking there, Lenny. Uh, Casey, just a word of advice. Don't be a neckbeard. <laughs> Nar, neckbeard the pirate. <laughs> Had a rough day. I need to escape. Well, escape with us. Um, I'm just going through questions here from the channel. And if anybody has any questions they'd like to ask. Um, the problem is, is that I'm going through my comment section on the videos. And I don't have a lot of questions. Most of it's... Oh, here we go. Uh, can I start writing articles from Algeria? This is from Loli. Because there are websites that only allow some countries. Yeah, unfortunately, um, the majority of the blogging sites that you can use, you have to use something like PayPal or um, Stripe. Yeah, PayPal or Stripe. And unfortunately, PayPal and Stripe is not available in every country. In fact, Buy Me a Coffee just got rid of their ability to wire bank wire transfer to banks in 160 countries. So that kind of like just gutted a lot of people. So unfortunately, you're going to be locked into wherever those platforms are available. Now, you can probably kind of get around that kind of stuff if you use a VPN, but uh, your bank will still have to be in one of those areas. So unfortunately... Um, that's where we are on that. So I'm not sure if Algeria was in it. Okay. Yes, PayPal is available in Algeria, which means you can use hub pages um, because hub pages uses PayPal only. So, and so does uh, Ko-Fi. Ko-Fi uses PayPal as well. So you can use Ko-Fi, which is kind of like buy me a coffee for blogs and videos in Algeria. Um, have you written for writers, writer access? Yes, I was a big, um, big writer for writer access. At one time I was on text broker, writer access and Fiverr at the same time. I would have a different tab open for each one and I would bounce back and forth depending on who had more work. Now, nowadays writers writer access has a ton of stuff that they didn't have back in the day. So writer access is like way more robust than it is what than it was when I was writing. And so I would have weeks where I'd make money weekly on text broker and writer access only paid monthly. And so I would have a continuous stream of cash coming in. Now, the only reason why I stopped using writer access is because I became way uh, more busy on text broker. Uh, 
Uh, I was getting far more direct order clients. I was on a bunch of teams that kept me constantly writing. So I was writing all day. And so I didn't need to bounce back and forth. But that is a good, um, a good thing to do is have as many open as possible and just keep going back and forth. Um, depending on who had more work. Yes, I did like writer access though. Um, aside from text broker, that's the one I made the most money on. Uh, Dr. Diana, yeah, neckbeards are the bad pirates. It did for a minute. It happened when I was laying in what bed and moved my head against a pillow. But man, I'm a man, so I toughed it out. What the fuck did I miss? <laughs> I don't know if I want to. <laughs> What is a neck beard? Neck beard is the guys who wear their beards, but also like all the way halfway down their damn neck. They don't have it trimmed up. <laughs> I would never do it because it makes me itch. Like right now, I forgot to I forgot to shave, and it's driving me nuts. Ron says, with some luck, I will be able to publish my next Medium article, a future career in artificial intelligence, this week. Awesome. I think my Medium Premium account. Um, was shut down. I got an email about it recently and I didn't log in. <laughs> so that's how much I gave a shit. Um, AI is definitely the next big thing. Yep. Bum, 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 bum. We're all going to get taken over by AI. That's. There's a sci fi. Well, there's lots of sci fi written in that. Kind of hard to make anything unique with that. Yeah, so it might be able to. Um, see, it looks handy. Thanks for the info. I'll definitely give this plug it a try. See, it's... I'm just too good at what I do. <laughs> um, gah. Okay. Oh, that was me commenting to a spammer. They wrote text. So, uh, seriously, all that effort to set up a bot I could put as text? <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, you see, it's synonymous with nice guy. It means a guy that thinks he is entitled to female attention. What a neck beard? No, not from where I stand. Neck beard for me was just more of a visual thing. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. Do we? This is from Riswandi. Do we just need an AdSense or Amazon account to start writing, or do we have a website before that AdSense already paid us to connect with Hub Pages? Um, I don't have a lot of experience with Hub Pages, but you can start writing and earning right now uh, without adding your own account. Um, I know that you can add uh, Amazon affiliate links to it, and. Um, I believe you can add your own AdSense to it. And I think I did back in the day. And that's going to be one of my next series of videos is for hub pages. Um, especially now that I'm done doing the vocal one. And, um, well, that was sudden. Um, but yeah, you can just, you can start uh, writing right now for hub pages and earning two cents a month. <laughs> I've only got three articles. What do you expect? Oh, that one went a little bit up my nose. Um, that's a good start. Oh. Yeah. Not a lot of not a lot of questions. Ah, got cat hair going up every orifice. Was very interesting and informative. <sighs> Oh, there we go. I think you got some Asperger's or something, homeboy. Oh this was on the Eltradian Rhythms video. Okay, vid, though. And I'm like, I don't know what that was in regards to, but I'm just incredibly tired, so I don't know why you think I have Asperger's. I think he doesn't, he didn't bother looking up what that was. <laughs> I don't think that word means what he think it means. But with a, with a name like Ducius Malfoy, Kind of figure that he has a little bit of a troll streak in him. But you know what? 
God damn it, cloak or shadow. Ah. This is stupid. I'm brushing you. Where's the brush? We're getting rid of this. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I was gonna watch me freak out my cat. Because I am brushing your ass. And I'm so tired of inhaling cat hair. Can't do anything. I have no idea where the kids put the damn brush. Guess I'm not brushing you. I hit you up with a vacuum. How about that? Uh. Okay, Michael, I just finished two blog posts. Writing blogs takes so much out of me. Pfft, rookie. <laughs> I literally have a diagnosis for Asperger's, but a troll. Yeah, uh, the only thing I've been diagnosed with is uh, um, depressive bipolar back in the day. I think it's like bipolar one nowadays. I don't know. Um, oh, here we go. Um, Asperger's syndrome, an autistic disorder most notable for the often great discrepancy between the intellectual and social abilities of those who have it. Um, pervasive developmental disorder that is characterized by an inability to understand how to re interact socially. I don't see... How... If, uh, do I not know how to interact socially? I know how to interact socially. <laughs> I'm just a dick and don't care. <laughs> well, I'm going to go right. Okay, Nat, have a good day. Um, hey, Michael, I'm applying to some content mills, but I want to know if you had any advice on where writers can get feedback for their pieces to improve. I don't. Um, mm. I was helping people with that before, but it was getting to be way too much because everybody kept throwing stuff my way. I don't have that time. So... Um, The best thing I could think, uh, the best, what I did was uh, I just submitted the piece and whenever editors for textbook or writer access would comment, I would take their comments and write it down in a notebook, take to Google and research how to fix it. Um, aside from that, I don't know if there's any groups, like, you can probably use um, groups on maybe perhaps Facebook groups. So, I don't know. Um, but constant content will also give you feedback before they even take the article so constant content is another good one that I like that I never really got to explore more of I wrote a couple of articles didn't sell them but I got so busy with text broker that I completely forgot about constant content and mm, oh well. I still bought my house so it's no big loss <laughs> I have a smoothie addiction. It's pretty bad. All right. Um, look up the definition for Nick Beard and Nerve Dictionary. Jesus. Um, thanks for this tutorial. I don't. There's not a lot of. Not a lot of questions. Kind of disappointing. <laughs> In a way. Um, okay, Curi okay. from Megan Riley, curious how this works out for you. I just started one. This is for setting up Kindle Fire lock screen ads. So apparently she didn't read the, uh, or didn't watch the follow-up to that, where lock screen ads for Kindle um, are extremely strict on what you can put. Apparently my book is too controversial for the lock screen ads. <laughs> so I had to go with uh, the product ads instead. Which is kind of a bummer, but... Oh, well. It is what it is. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to find more here. Oh, that's a big-ass, long conversation I had with this person. Okay, this one was for the Buy Me a Coffee. If anybody's interested in monetizing their blog or their YouTube channel. Um, I'm not good at YouTube, don't upload regularly, either way. So doubt my channel will be monetized anytime soon. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Just this week, heard about Buy Me a Coffee and was thinking mine might be. Buy me a gallon of gas, because you can change what Buy Me a Coffee does. You can either put keep the default as Buy Me a Coffee, or you can take Buy Me a Beer, Buy Me Gas, 
buy me a eight. <laughs> you can change it to whatever you want. Uh, still struggling to understand YouTube, so me too. So having a hard time grasping this. Me, yeah, uh, I feel you. <laughs> is there a button that goes on your videos like the YouTube subscribe button? Or is it just a link we copy and paste in the description? Hope they look at the description. Thank you for the video. There's two ways you can do it. I have the link to the buy me a coffee in my video. In fact, my first um, tip was from a video. It wasn't from the blog. Even though it was on the blog longer. Um, but uh, I just have a link on it. I have a call to action that goes with it. But you'd probably take it also a little bit further if you add a call to action within the video, which I don't do. I suck at self-promotion. So you could do something like um, like all those guys when they advertise their Patreons and Ko-Fi's accounts, uh, members get behind the scenes videos and whatnots and all this other cool junk and yada 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 so that they're more interested and tempted to join as a member. Um, or they can just give you a tip. So um, definitely link and might as well add a call to action within the video. Uh, same with the blog post. I have the button on the blog, even though I haven't really got a lot of um, tips since I took off the widget, which I'm thinking about putting it back on. The reason why I took it off, though, is because according to Google Page Speed Insights, it was slowing my site down, even though on a phone my site loads up wicked fast. So, I don't know. I'm thinking about putting it back in, but... Um, there's all kinds of ways you can utilize Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, it's a link, so you can also um, add it to any free website that you have, like on Blogger or WordPress.com or any of the other free websites. I actually used it a couple times in Vocal on some of my articles. So, anywhere you can paste the link. But for a blog, you can install the um, plugin that will add a button to your website or you can copy and paste the code directly from Buy Me a Coffee to add it. And I've got a video on how on four ways to add buttons to your website. So, but yeah, that's how you do that with Buy Me a Coffee. Um, I write here and there short stories, and my family and friends enjoy them, saying I should get my work out there for others to read. I heard about Vocal, but I was unsure about it. So look up reviews about it online with YouTube. Came across your video and enjoyed it a lot. I look forward to part two. Thank you very much, Dark Brain. I did part two today, and I did more than double my income. So instead of 22 cents, I got 70. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I pay for the vocal pluses, 10 bucks a month, so I'm losing money. But um, there's a lot that goes into vocal. Um, I know a lot of people who specifically use their fiction stuff on vocal itself in fact they have a, a fiction subcategory so um it really depends on if you can attract an audience to read your stuff because it doesn't matter um what kind of keywords or what kind of topics you cover if you don't provide something that somebody wants to click on and read no one's going to read it i go over that in the video but um I don't know, I'm still playing around with uh, seeing what else I can do with vocal. I would like to see if I can get it to there. I saw someone say they can make $500 a day on vocal. I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> After about a thousand articles, maybe. I don't know, there might be people out there that can do it, but I can't see it being a possibility. And the last one here is Totality of Reality. It was today, a few hours ago. Do you know what is going on with TextBooker? Why is there no work there? Um, I haven't been on TextBooker in quite some time, but um, I was going somewhere that. Oh, but uh, when I was active, this is about the time where there would be a lull in workload. Usually it starts at the very beginning of the year, picks up at about towards the end of March, beginning of April. But it, it there was always like a, a low point right after Christmas. Um, and then I would wind up getting nonstop work again. I don't know if it's still the same that way or what's going on, but that is something to consider is that sometimes content mills just don't have a lot of work 
every industry goes through a um, peaks and valleys. So nothing to freak out about yet until about if you've gone a whole month without seeing any kind of work, then there might be something going on. But um, that's when you get direct order clients and get on as many teams as possible because then it doesn't matter what's in the open pool. Uh, like the blog team would drop uh, 1,200 articles once a month and then um, the roofing company would drop another two or 300 articles once a month. So you get on a couple of teams that do that con uh, consistently and get yourself about five or six daily clients, uh, regular um, direct order clients. You can keep yourself busy indefinitely, no matter what kind of work hits Touch Burger. Oh, alrighty. So there's that. Did I miss anybody's questions? I had to really scour for these ones. Either I suck and no one wants to watch my videos, or I'm too good at making videos. <laughs> Thanks for the awesome video. One of my web pages. This is on the uh, fix the cumulative layout shift in WordPress. Now has thanks for the awesome video. Most of my web pages now have a page speed score of 100. That's awesome. The only issue that resulted is a top optimized cache becomes extremely large quickly. Yes, it does. And I need to empty it every couple days. Um, of course, that is a small price to pay, but I have not found a solution unless the developer of Opt Optimize add an option to automatically purge cache. And they won't. There's a reason why. Um, something about um, the way the cache is built, that if they did do an automatic purge, you would screw things up. So, what you can do is install, like I advised him, uh, Dave W. here, to install a cache enabler to run alongside of a Toptimize and set it up to empty the cache whenever a plugin is activated or deactivated anytime you publish new content. So, like if you're regularly writing on your website, uh, cache enabler will in, will empty out um, a top a top optimize fairly regularly. So the only website I have a problem with is for some reason michaelbrockbank.com is not emptying it automatically, even though um, I have it set up the same as everything else. I think I have probably another plugin that's stopping cache enabler from triggering. So I just have to go through and figure out which one it is. But aside from that, it works perfect on the other blogs. Um, I don't get the warning that the cache size is too big. So cache enabler, definitely worth the install. It works perfectly with the top device. <sighs> That's if anybody here has a web, uh, WordPress website. But yeah, I'm like, I wonder how far back I can go. <laughs> Probably irrelevant questions now. Um, um, wow, a lot of you guys have stuck around with me for a long time. All right. Um, this is from Nut Larson. Don't know if they're still a subscriber. This was from uh, four months ago. Can't know how I. St oh. Yeah, this is uh, an advertisement. I remember this one. I was going to reply to it, and I was like. I don't know if they're spamming or if they're just illiterate. <laughs> so I'm going to side on a possibility. Um, God, I can't find any more questions. Does anybody else have anything to add or are we just hanging out and drinking? <laughs> this is a drinking show. I love Drambuie. Um, damn, I'm like really. No, back in the day, when I first started the YouTube channel, I used to get questions all the freaking time. And that's why I was making those videos once a week. There was times where I'd have to pick the top 10 because I'd have that many questions. And I, I didn't want to make a five hour video. Nowadays, I don't get shit for questions starting to make me feel a bit self-conscious <laughs> okay this is for getting a four-star rating in text broker is it important to com complete profile wow is it important to compete 
profile while waiting for your simple sample, you'll be assessed. Translation, it's important to complete your profile while you're waiting for your sample article to be processed. Um, I would, if you're a text broker, I would definitely um, complete the profile no matter what, um, especially nowadays where it uses more of your profile in search. So if someone's looking for a expert, um, an expert WordPress uh, writer, make sure you flesh that out on your um, bio because it will show up now. So always... Uh, it doesn't matter if you're on TextBroker, Writer Access, uh, Fiverr, or Freelancer.com. Fill out your profiles completely, especially on LinkedIn. Uh, the more um, effort you put into your LinkedIn profile, the more likely you'll get hit up by big businesses who want to throw tons of money at you for doing the same work that you do for another company at a third the cost, <laughs> at a third the price. <coughs> I won't get into that, but yeah, fill it out. Uh, aside from the new camera and the warehouse, what other financial goals do you have related to writing? Um, fuck, I think that's it. <laughs> I just want my warehouse. If I have an actual external place to work, uh, I would like to set up a professional backdrop for when I do videos instead of my bathroom in the damn hallway. Um, I thought my office looked great until I had to give it to Sam because I like having my bookshelves behind me with all my stuff on it. But... Um, yeah, so the warehouse and a new camera, that's <laughs> that's all I'm focused on right now, laser focused. Um, Michael, have you ever used Surfer SEO? Yes, Keyword Surfer. Um, I actually did a video on it recently, or not recently, but last year or the year before. If yes, did you like it? Is it accurate and helpful? Um, yes and no. Um, let me grab the video for the keyword. I did a keyword surfer versus keywords everywhere and I use both back to back or on top of each other um, some things in keyword surfer are great while other things aren't like the um, its ability to count the words in an article no it's way off like a good three or four hundred words off um, I tested it on my own blogs. I know exactly how many words were in each blog post and Keyword Surfer could not differentiate the difference between a blog post and the actual HTML coding that goes on a blog. So from that aspect, Keyword Surfer definitely sucks. But I do like how it has, um, it is fairly accurate for all of its other stuff, like its uh, search ranking. I do like how you can select everything and export them to a... Um, a CV, a CSV file at that right there from Google Search, and um, it it's got a lot of useful usefulness to it. That's why I use like today. I have Keyword Surfer and Keywords Everywhere running at the same time. It creates a mess. Like there's times where my Google Search is jacked as shit, but it works. <laughs> so as long as you could sift through the junk. Um, the video to that, Keyword Surfer. Oh, see, I even have the Keyword Surfer AI Online Generator. That's something else. Um, in fact, Nat pulled a story out of it. She used the Keyword Surfer, the Outline Generator for a blog post. I did a video a bit in December on it. And that is kind of a cool, kind of a fun tool. The problem is, is that sometimes you'll have to go through and like remove some of the he outline uh, headings that it wants you to use. Remember, they're all suggestions. You don't have to write an article exactly how Keyword Server AI Outline Generator tells you to do it. You don't want to because <laughs> it's all fucked up. But it does give you a lot of great ideas for doing it, and that's one of the uh, key things I like about Keyword Surfer. But here is the uh, the comparison video. Copy. And keep in mind, this was back in last year, right? I believe um, keyword, this was November, oh no, this was November of 2020, oh, that's a couple of years old, so it might be a little bit out, 20, oh, that's a couple of years old, so it might be a little bit outdated. Does Surfer SEO help you improve the SEO of your post to help it rank? 
Um, from what I can tell when I'm comparing, because I don't just take one um, tool, I don't take one tool's word for it, because I'm, I'm a skeptic, which is in my nature, um, which is one reason why I can never be scammed, is because I always think everybody has an ulterior motive. <laughs> so I don't take just one tool's word for it. I will compare the keyword versus um, keywords everywhere, um, uh, keywords SEO or SE keyword surfer and then uh, Google Planner um, I'll use all three and also sometimes I'll well not really when I'm when I'm right working for my client I get to use their Ahrefs account and Ahrefs is pretty fun but it too misses the mark sometimes like it'll say that an article is ranking or should be getting way more searches for a certain phrase, even though Google says, nah. <laughs> so I always compare different phrases with different tools to see what's good. But for the most part, keywords everywhere and keyword surfer are fairly close to being in line with uh, Google AdWords or Google Planner. Uh, AdWords. Google's keyword planner for AdWords. Um, they're all three are pretty close. So whereas Google Keyword Planner will give you an estimate, like say such and such keyword is anywhere from 100 to 1,000 searches per month. Um, keywords Everywhere and uh, yeah, Keyword Surfer will give you more of an exact amount, like it'll say 840. That's based on average. But um, outside of that, both of them are really good. Um, I enjoy using both which is why they're still installed on my computer. For a while there, Keywords Everywhere, everything on it was free. And then out of nowhere, they charged for everything. So I uninstalled it. <laughs> like, yeah. And then they started making stuff free again. Like half their stuff is free again. So then I reinstalled it. So um, I'm using Rank IQ to help me optimize my content to rank. Awesome. I use uh, Yoast SEO on um, WordPress. And then I use um, SEMrush through Yoast SEO because it has a scanning button with it. As well as I started using uh, Wincher. I haven't really played around with Wincher all that much, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, but I do like those keyword tools, which is why I think I fe featured them on a keyword video that I spent six hours making that nobody fucking watched. <laughs> There's a lot of cool tools in that video. I don't know why I did so poorly. This goes to show that sometimes you can miss the mark, even if you use the best key freezes. <sighs> um, okay, yeah, so I answered that one. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So let's see. I think. I got everything on it. Cool. Okay. So for financial goals, I really can't think of anything. Um, just my, just those two. I wouldn't mind buying a, a brand new car. Like I don't want anything fancy. I don't need a McLaren or a Lambo. I want a fucking Kia. <laughs> I want a Kia Sorento actually. <laughs> I'm a simple man. I have simple pleasures. I'd be happy if my damn 2006 town and country, worked. Yes, I'm a soccer mom. I love that man. <laughs> man has a flat tire and a dead battery and needs front end work. Okay, Alexander Ortiz, could you possibly make a video about what has made you become a better writer over time? Whether they be tips, tricks, advices. If you did make a video like this, could you send me the link? Thanks. I did. I've made quite a few, actually. Um, I've done quite a few videos on it. Actually, I've done quite a few videos and blog posts. But um, a big thing that made um, the biggest impact on me as a freelance writer was spending every moment that I wasn't writing for a, con uh, for a client, I spent researching how to write better. Um, if I wasn't writing or blogging, I was learning. And I did that for years. And so I went from not knowing shit about AP style to pumping out some of the 
like a large portion of the stuff I've done for clients, or just like with Green Geeks or with the uh, or Rider Sanctuary, um, hit number one page in Google search for their phrase. So I'm doing something right. But I spent a lot of time researching everything. So that would be my biggest number one is uh, get a blog, practice writing. If you want to practice blog, get a free one from write, like WordPress.com or Blogger and just learn everything you can about AP style and then put it into practice with a blog. That's what I did with Writer Sanctuary. I didn't go the free route because, well, I was already paying for my old website from the computer center, so I just said, I gotta keep it. Added more domains. I just kept adding. <laughs> now I've got five blogs. But um, I would put everything I learned into the blog and into my client work. And so after a while, it starts getting integrated into memory. And so it becomes second nature after a while. So that would be probably one of the biggest things I would start with. Is uh, put it into practice. Learn all you can. Uh, Michael needs a new bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I do. I don't know if this from personal experience or anything. <laughs> it's just the... Uh, the word on the street is this guy needs a new mattress. Oh, yeah. I've got... What the hell are you vibrating for? So, I've got a memory foam top mattress. And it's topped with a... We got a uh, a cushioned um, topper that goes on top of it to make it softer. Didn't do dick. I've got my comforter on top of that. And then a microfiber blanket on top of that. That's what this gray one is. And... So there's about two inches of blanket and topper between me and the memory foam. And the memory foam, remember to be a brick. Uh, this thing is like hard as shit. I can't sleep on it. It hurts my back. Yes, there you go, Neo. I am looking for a new bed. <laughs> so uh, Rank IQ grade your content compared against the content on the first page of Google. And it shows you how to improve your content as well. Rank awesome, that's pretty cool. New glasses. Um, Sam's got, a, I have an appointment at the eye doctor on the 25th to do my test, which is going to cost more than a damn pair of glasses. I remember when you can go down to Walmart for 40 bucks and get new glasses or do your eye test. No, 100 and something, 125. Like, fuck, the glasses are only 110 and they're titanium frames. <sighs> Fuckers. That's why they need to give everybody a $15 an hour raise is just so we can catch up to all the crap they keep jacking up. And by the time that we get all that, we'll have to get another raise because everybody keeps increase, increasing the prices of shit. Greedy fucking world we live in. Anyway, rank. IQ. I think I've heard of rank IQ. I might have done an article on him. Oh, see, it's AI-powered. Eh, let's see. Uh, some AI-powered stuff will work, but, you know, I'm still 50 bucks a month. <sighs> 50 bucks a month for something that's not guaranteed. You gotta roll the dice. Because it doesn't matter what kind of content you have or what kind of words you put together if you're still not able to write in a way that attracts and keeps an audience reading your content it's a waste of 50 bucks it all comes down to you as the writer and how well you can engage that audience I don't know uh, it might be cool but you know 50 bucks a month is a little outside of my price range, especially if I'm trying to buy, um, I want to save up to get Atticus. So Atticus is more important to me. Uh, new glasses. I can remember when, dude, it's because you're old. Hey, fuck off, man. When you start thinking in terms of decades. <laughs> oh, there was something that we were doing today. I'm like, didn't I just do that? I'm like, you know, no, I did three years ago. So I can't say that. I can't remember what it was. It was something that I thought was fairly recent. But no. <laughs> like right now I keep thinking, 
I didn't really move. I've. Uh, I didn't really move back home all that long ago. It's been five years. I've been home for five years now. Uh, inflation is real. Yeah, it is. Gas is three ninety five a gallon here today. It's uh, up to seven bucks in some places in California. But a large part of that is because of what's going on over in Afghanistan. Or not Afghanistan. Um, Ukraine. Wow. That was Freudian. <laughs> AI is the next big thing though, Michael. A someday AI will replace all of us. We'll be out of work soon. Nope. There's some jobs that AI will never be able to do. Um, because a lot of it does require an emotional human element that artificial intelligence will never be able to replace. And, well, I could go grotesque with it, but I won't. <laughs> uh, no, what's going to happen is that AI is going to realize it doesn't need us. It's going to wipe us out and then take over the world and have a bot world. Bum, 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 bum. I need your clothes, your shoes, and your motorcycle. Shadow says, I don't give two fucks. <laughs> But you know, by the time AI does all that, we'll be long gone, so it doesn't matter. It'll be up to my great-great-grandchildren to lead the fight. Um, it looks cool, though, uh, Ron. Um, rank IQ. you have to let me know how it goes. They don't even have a... That's one thing I don't like. Is there, like, a free trial? Um... 50% oh it's a $99 rate per month this is a special 50% off a <laughs> hundred bucks a month um, no thanks I would just learn rather learn how to write it doesn't see there's no it doesn't say anything about a free trial though so if it doesn't have a free trial I might have to pass I don't like Especially if you can get up to like a hundred bucks a month. I mean, there's a lot better things I'd rather pay a hundred bucks a month for. Oh. But anyway, are we done with questions? <laughs> if so, maybe we'll call it a night. Um... try to find some more on the channel but like I said before I'm like just too good at what I do it's not a bad thing to have or it's not a bad thing but it makes doing an AMA a lot harder uh, no free trial I didn't like that but decided to try it out anyway yeah yeah keep me posted Ron I would love to know um, I don't do that's one that's one of the biggest issues I have with uh, Atticus as well. I, I'd rather have, even if it's a seven-day trial, I mean, I just give me a day to see if I like it. But it is what it is, I guess. Um, okay, here, here's one from five months ago, I guess. Hi, sir. I hate it when people call me sir. And you know it. It's mostly the Middle Eastern people who call me sir. Even though they're being nice, they're, they're not being scammers or anything like that, but they are like so proper. I'm like, don't call me sir. My name is Michael. I needed your advice. <laughs> my goal is to earn $50 to $100 per month. I'm confused about choosing where to write my articles between hub pages, vocal media, or any other website which accepts PayPal waiting for your reply. Um... I advise him to do them all, if as many as possible. Now, if you're focusing on PayPal only, um, hub pages. Uh, Vocal Media does Stripe, and uh, Medium does Stripe. So the only one you have access to is hub pages. Um, but hub pages also let you do um, um, if, Amazon links, and yeah, so. I would say 
yeah, throw it into Hub Pages. Um, I kind of liked how Hub Pages layout was. It's kind of similar to Vocal. It's a block editor, but um, it seems to be more flexible when you're trying to do certain shit in Vocal or in Hub Pages as opposed to Vocal. So I'm looking forward to doing uh, the next streak of articles on Hub Pages. Um, I think I've I can make like two cents a month. <laughs> I don't let me look. I haven't looked at my Hub Pages account in a while. Where is it? That's Medium. Um, there's Hub Pages, Writer Sanctuary. Look, I've got two articles. Woo! <laughs> Sight, man. Ever since they edited my shit, I mean, they they went to town. They edited, changed the words. I'm like, man, what is wrong with you people? You don't change your writer's work. That Well, you can, but not that much. That was just very, very disturbing. I don't like that at all. Anyway, um, let's see. Earnings, there we go. How much do I earn on top pages? Hey, look at that. <laughs> Jack and Dick. <laughs> uh, earnings report for the past seven days. Less than a penny. <laughs> Last month in February, I made two cents. Woo. Keep in mind, I have two articles that I wrote years ago. So I've got a, I've got my work cut out for me on, on Hub Pages. But, um, see, I published on the September 11th of 2019 and September 5th of 2019. And that's it. Um, but it was featured. I had uh, both articles got featured, so five solid reasons beginners beginner writers should use content mills. Eight things people rarely tell you about working from home. Kind of like my default test the waters for articles. Um, okay, so one thing I do like about Hub Pages over Vocal is that it does have a bit more to its um, analytics, but not by much. <laughs> it's almost like these companies really don't give a shit. But traffic sources, it does have uh, a few, a few things better than Vocal, but not by much. So. I'll be doing more with hub pages in the near future. Because I would love to get any one of these to actually make some money. It helped me get my warehouse. <sighs> Anywho. Um, hopefully it helps to post my rank. To my rank. Yep. Oh, one. Uh, I hate it when people call me ma'am. I much prefer miss because I'm a young lady. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I tell you what my name is. Don't call me sir if you know my name. <laughs> I'm not a lord by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I think you'd do much better on pages as vocal versus vocal. I've got 15 articles and make like 3 to $6 a month. See? There you go. That's I've got 40-something articles on vocal and I made 70 cents. So, like I said, I think hub pages is more flexible than vocal. Mostly because I have seen Hub Pages articles appear in search before. Medium is way more common, but I have seen Hub Pages stuff pop up. So um, it is crawled by Google more often than vocal. And you are able to use your own AdSense accounts. And you can add your ads, your affiliate links, which you can do with vocal as well. But I just haven't had a chance to do it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what I can do with hub pages. And I had people, um, when I first brought this up, there was one chick who made like, I think, uh, I think she said like 60 bucks a day on hub pages. I'm like, fuck, that would, that's almost half of what I need for my warehouse. If I can reach that, fucking A. <laughs> so I don't know. We're going to see what we can do with it. Um, something to look into. Your article, one vocal. How much time do you waste in a work, in a day working from home isn't loading. I noticed that earlier. Is that the most... The most recent one, um, I tried looking at the stats of it today, and it was crashing. So, I I don't know what's going on with it. I'm thinking about asking them. 
go. That is not the right one. Stats. <sighs> Stories. Published. Uh, page five. God damn. Okay, so it's the... No? Page six. No, that wasn't it either. I think, yeah, I think it's the newest one. It wasn't working for me either. So I'm going to have to, if it doesn't start working tomorrow, I'm probably going to give them some shit. <laughs> Close that. Um, I monetize my Medium articles with affiliate links, primarily Amazon affiliate links. Yeah, I, I was making five cents a month on my one article from Medium. But like I said, I think they closed my account. They changed their um, requirements. And because they don't have enough followers, I think I lost my premium status. But like I said earlier, if I gave a shit, I would probably would have logged in. <laughs> but at the moment, I don't. I mean, it would be nice, but I have so much going on right now that I, I don't know if I want to spend money on something that may or may not work. Um, damn it. Okay, so let me try it again here. I got stats. It was the last article I tried pulling data for today. Because I was trying to do... Well, I did that spreadsheet that's in the video today. And so I was trying to open up the last article and it wouldn't load. Yep, that's it. How much time do you waste in a day working from home? Something went wrong. Please try again later. So I want to help you improve. Okay, so when I click on the link that says help us improve, it's not doing anything. So, hmm. <laughs> not very good there, Vocal. I might have to write a very unkindly review. The home button works. But it won't let me do anything to fix it. So, if it doesn't start working tomorrow, then I'll just, uh, I guess I'll try to email them. It's not like it's, last time it took them like four days to respond. I don't know. I'm not a big, you know, the vocal has a cool layout. I kind of like it. But like I said in that video today, um, without being crawled by Google, you are limited to the audience of people who use vocal that's it um, you're not collecting new readers from Google search uh, you are at the um, well you're at the the uh... <sighs> shit <laughs> I can't remember where I was going with that you are at the <sighs> there's a word can't think of the word. It sucks getting old. You are at the uh... Oh my god, I'm like drawing a complete blank. <sighs> Essentially you're screwed because you can only attract a certain audience. <laughs> Only the people who use vocal are going to read your shit. That's my point. Unless you share on social media. But like I said in that video, without knowing when... Mercy, thank you very much, Chris. <laughs> you are at the mercy of people who use vocal. That's it. Unless you share it on social media, everybody's like, yeah, we know it. <laughs> unless you share your article on social media, you're not going to get any new readers. And even then, unless you use hashtags, you're not going to get any new readers either. Um, and without knowing when a post is going to actually publish because it's been taking them two or three days to go through it, I can't even set up a schedule for it to share, and by the time it's posted, I completely forget and move on. So, I don't know, I'm not a big... Vocal was cool back in the day, but I don't see how people are making money on it. It's, uh... I'm not feeling it. So, I'm going to try a few more things... Just because I have some ideas of some really cool experiments that I want to play with. Probably to prove my point that it's a crappy website. <laughs> but I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to try to make something work out of it. But I'm not going to hold my breath. <sighs> so. Um, 
definitely going to be tr uh, doing more with hub pages, probably. Um. Okay, that was two months ago from Aways, but B U T T. Whatever. Have you started writing for hub pages? I'm also a beginner. I want to start writing. Um, two articles. <laughs> I do plan on doing more this year, though, because I want to see just what a 30-day stretch would do on it, too. Um, let's see. What else we got here? Goddamn. Affirmation proof. 10,000 words a day. Very inspiring. Yes, ten. I used to be able to do ten thousand words a day. I wouldn't hit it every day consistently. There were days where I'd hit ten thousand, but on average, I'd bounce between six and seven thousand words a day, depending on if uh, there was a good workflow. So, um, I'd say I would average around seventy seven thousand to seventy five hundred, depending on everything. So that'd be my average, and I would hit ten k. Um, Maybe once or twice a month, and if I just got into it, so. But it is possible to do ten thousand words a day. Just takes it on contact mills. This is for on contact mills and for writing blog posts. Now blog posts are a hell of a lot easier to write, especially if you're basing everything off of uh, personal information or experience. They can just crank crank that shit out. Um, I wrote a thousand word blog post the other day, and it took me less than forty minutes. So. It really depends, but it is possible. You may have better luck with hub pages. That's what I'm, th I'm thinking. That's yeah, probably. I think the biggest thing between Vocal and hub pages is that Vocal uses subdomains for its different niches, while hub pages uses actual domains. So Google will prioritize a domain over a subdomain every time, and hub pages got that right. I don't know how Medium gets in uh, Google so well across a spectrum of topics. Whatever they're doing is working, but um, Vocal just can't seem to break into it, so I don't know. I think I'd do better just maintain my own blog. <laughs> but, you know, it's neither here nor there. We're experimenting, so... Well, it looks like we're running low on viewers so we can't come up with any more questions i guess we can call it a night i thought for sure i was going to have more than that but i guess i just answered everybody's questions i need to find something else i can break <laughs> um ow you're hurting me Um, why I landed so late here? Thanks for wisdom. That was on uh, get freelance writing jobs with no experience. Um, to really respond to that one, I don't know why you're here so late. <laughs> um. I'm like all the way back to six months. Um, once you get the content you need from Vocal and Hub Pages, you can focus on your blog. Yeah, or I can just focus on my blog now. <laughs> now, I, there's a lot of data I want to get for Vocal and Hub Pages, mostly for articles, uh, a review, a good review, actually. Um, and if I can figure out how to make one of them work, that'd be great, too. Like, I'd be more than yeah. I'd be more than jazz to have vocal and hub pages bringing in sixty bucks a day from each platform. But I can get my damn warehouse. But after thirty blog posts and I only increased it from twenty two cents to seventy cents, I really don't. Uh, it would take me years to get to 60 bucks a day. <laughs> years and years of blogging every day. <laughs> but I do have some uh, 
the things I was playing around with the spreadsheet, uh, the spreadsheet to track what kind of articles work best on vocal. Um, I kind of talked about it a little bit in the video, but um, you know, if it, if vocal had some better analytics to show you what kind of articles are working the best, that'd be great, but it doesn't, so it is what it is. Great advice in this video. You're welcome. Oh, here's one. Looks like part two never came, so I guess it wasn't worth it. This was from six months ago. All right, we're talking about that. Um, my response was, I have shit going on. <laughs> so, you know, life happens. Not every YouTuber can sit here and make videos for you day in, day out. Uh, some of us have real jobs with a real mortgage. So... <laughs> You should re-upload when you're ready to do the 30 days. Just free a device. I was really looking forward to part 2 after seeing this video. And I was disappointed. My bad. <laughs> Sorry you're disappointed. Move on. There's plenty of people on YouTube you can watch. Uh, Doobie here. I just subscribed to your channel. Is there any giveaways? Uh-huh. I'll take it, sir. Hoo-hoo. Okay, I did have a giveaway when I hit a thousand subscribers, but you know, um, I was going to do another giveaway when I got um, added to the YouTube partnership program, which should have been in August, but YouTube decided to tank my videos. So they're not even being shown now. I have a 5% average click through rate. Um, some of my videos are up to 25%. So when the videos are shown to people, people actually watch them problem is, is that YouTube's not showing them to people <laughs> so I need to figure out why I think it's because I'm vulgar and I drink um, I have a question oh, here we go is there a way I can safely write my stories elsewhere with something like this perhaps on textbooker um, textbooker is more um, business based than creative you'll sometimes you'll have some creative writing interest but not much at all most of it's going to be from businesses who want content for their products or services I did a ton of content for roofing companies and a bunch of companies in Las Vegas and for the most part it's all business related so if you wanted to like publish your stories not text broker um, yeah I'd say self-publishing if you can get it spruced up enough to where it looks good in a book or maybe even slap it up on Wattpad to see if there's an audience for your genre or niche or topics. Um, there's all kinds of places you can put writing up for free and people can give you proper critiques on it, not necessarily trolling. But uh, text broker and writer access are more for business stuff, so I wouldn't... Um, jump into creative writing on those platforms. Um, do they have a writing text box on their website or do you have to submit via Word document? This is for a text broker. Um, <laughs> so the person's name is Shit Brain Rat Face. <laughs> Love your name, by the way. Um, if the text broker uses a text-based editor that you can add HTML to while you're writing content. Uh, you don't have to upload a Word document. It's built right into their system. You can copy and paste from a Word if you want. But, uh, like I would copy and paste from WordPress. And, um, but it is a text editor on their site that you can use. So... Um, the cat made me subscribe. <laughs> uh, let's see. Awesome video. What is meant by writing one million words? Ah, this is for my how to write one million words in a year. How can we use them? Please reply me. I have no advice giving friends in writing. Okay, so, um, this is from Rupa, Rupa Palam, which I did reply to seven months ago. Um, when I did that, uh, one million words, I keep track of every word I write for my blogs, um, the novels, the YouTube scripts, um, 
pretty much anything that progresses my career forward. I don't count social media interactions or emails, um, mundane shit like that. Um, so the one million words all works towards um, keeping me productive. And last year I hit 748,000, I think. It was 700 and something. But this year I'm cruising to break a million easily especially if i put in so much effort writing um kingmaker and then the two books after that so um i can use the words for blogs um the more blog posts i write the more traffic i get so it's all it all boils down to keeping yourself productive and producing more content and getting more people to read your shit so my novel uh despair um, that's on Wattpad, uh, five blogs, so yeah, every word counts towards it. Um, not sure if that answered your question, but there you go. Oh, <laughs> this is from Gil Horton, it was from, uh, when Chris and I were doing a podcast, episode four. <laughs> Interesting conversation, guys. Keep them coming. I tried writing for Tex Brooker years ago for some extra income. Just couldn't keep writing about lawyer and chiropractor X in City Y. <laughs> I've done lots of those. I have to at least be somewhat interested in what I'm writing. I assume the articles were subcontracted by an SEO agency. For the most part, they are. Um, in fact, I know several SEO agencies that use Tex Broker specifically for the writers. And um, so, yeah, I, I get that. Completely. Like, I wrote tons of articles on um, ways to fix a roof. I learned so much about soffits and <laughs> drip edges and everything else. I could probably fix mine now. Because <laughs> I've wrote a lot of them. Um, and there's also Parsons Rocks in um, Las Vegas. I had a ton of articles on that. Um, oh, there's another one. It was... Uh, they they make the uh, um, the displays at expos, but I did a ton of those articles. Um, biometric scanners, yeah, I, we've all done the mundane junk. <laughs> but you know that mundane junk, I did that for five years until I got to where I'm at now, and so all that mun mundane junk um, panned out. So just goes to show that you don't know what you're going to accomplish if you give up. Um, oh, here's one from K McLeod. I thought they paid well looking at how these bloggers behave. Good to know. I'll stick with e-commerce. This is for my AdSense uh, earnings per 1,000 visitors on a blog. Um, yeah, AdSense, even on AdSense on YouTube, AdSense doesn't pay shit. Uh, anybody who is making $10,000 a month isn't doing it from AdSense. Um, most of the big blog or big YouTubers also have their own brands or affiliates or sponsorships. AdSense makes a very small sliver of their income. AdSense doesn't pay what you think it does. But there are ways to in improve it. Like um, I'm kind of in talks with one right now that I'll probably be test driving their software here in the next day or two. And if it works out, then it's going to give us quite a bit of content to talk about and probably a way to boost our income. So I'm really excited. I don't want to go too much into it because I don't want to, like, jinx it or anything. But this might be something fucking awesome. <laughs> I'm excited for it. In fact, I just got an email from her just a minute ago that I need to check. So, Um... Uh, it was from six days ago. Okay, I did that one. Now, once you get the content you need from book on pages, you can focus on your blog. Okay, oh, Dan, oh man, Gil followed me on my old blog way back in the day, like maybe seven, eight years back. Good guy. Oh, the Gil Horton? Yeah, he was, he was uh, one of our, uh, Gil Horton was one of the guys that uh, actually watched our podcast almost every week when you and I were doing it. Yeah, I've seen yeah, I've seen Gil Horton on Twitter a few times. Yeah. 
Oh, wow, we are old, dude. <laughs> uh, we're probably the only guys who open a podcast with. God damn it. <laughs> That was episode 1.5 supplemental. That was the night we were having a hard time getting the damn podcast, the recording software to work. Hey, Nat's back. Um, it's good to know the classic editor is available in WordPress. Yes, it is. Uh, it is, but the more... Um, I've been using Gutenberg more often. I still hate Gutenberg something fierce, but um, it is getting better and it's getting more flexible so but yes you can still install and use the classic editor which i have running on um crossing colorado i think is the still the original editor <laughs> um working on a new sci-fi series awesome being kind of buried buried in this new thing well that's awesome i got to work on kingmaker a bit today and just hey Nat, just in time. Um, also, um, I did add the link to Kingmaker for those of you who weren't here earlier. Um, I just sent the email out for you guys to read. Uh, the Binding Coffee member monthly members can now read the first chapter of Kingmaker is available on Google Docs, and I sent the link. I'm also going to be adding Despair to it, so y'all can actually read Despair before I even record it on Wednesdays. Uh, I'll be setting that up tomorrow. So, But I can't find any more questions. I'm just so good at what I do. Dean. Hello, what link? I don't know who Dean is. <laughs> um, my name's not Dean. Um... Uh, maybe we'll just wrap it up. Because I'm really struggling to find any questions that we could fit with writing. Um, that was for... Um, is there an option to accept or decline projects? This is in Text Broker. Yes, you can accept or, den or decline them. Um... If you feel, in fact, um, if you feel that the client is trying to take advantage of you with unrealistic revisions, or if they keep wanting you to add more and more and more stuff to it, um, it's better to decline it. It doesn't count against you, and they legally can't use your stuff. In fact, I would go so far as to publish the article I was writing for them just so they can't use it, because Google timestamps everything that hits the internet. So, if they try to use it, I can then DMCA it. <laughs> you ain't gonna pay me for it, it's mine. <laughs> but you gotta be kind of strategic with it. I know people out there, I know writers out there who'll, um, like, as soon as a client asks for the first revision, they decline it immediately. Like, that is not professional. That is unprofessional as shit. It bothers me. Don't be a douchey writer. Um, Dragons Forever asks, is Buy Me A Coffee better than Ko-Fi and is it safe to use? I'm very curious when using new websites. Yes, uh, Buy Me A Coffee has paid me out quite a bit over the last three years in PayPal and now in Stripe because they dumped PayPal. Ko-Fi is the same way. Um, Ko-Fi does use PayPal still. so And they are legitimate and I have made a bit of money on it. The watch vibrated, but it didn't say why. Um, yep, yeah, yep, Kate, you're quit rubbing up against my glass, damn it. Yeah, you tell your two cents. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Anybody have any questions? Maybe we should just wrap it up. I'm thinking so. What's your favorite tool for boosting WordPress speed? Um, that would be a top optimize. Uh, getting rid of the CLS made a huge difference. And, um, yeah, the caching thing works great. 
can't think of any others that I would really put above them. I used to use W3 Total Cash, but uh, I found out Optimize works way better. And it's way simpler to set up. So, um, what else? You image optimizing works great if you're making WebP images, which makes images way smaller than JPEG. Google loves this. That Google has been trying to push it since 2003, and it's barely starting to take effect. <laughs> so, WebP's been around for a lot longer than I thought. But, um, yeah. Everything else is just more of uh, using a lightweight theme or keeping your plugins down, using property sized images. I mean, basic SEO stuff. But boosting speed, yeah, I can't think of it. Like, I've tried Speed Booster. Speed Booster was working great on Colorado Plays, but it does not work very well with a combination of Cloudflare, CDN, and there's one other thing I'm running at the same time. causes it to crash every fucking time. I had to remove it because it was, it was ramping up the memory on the server. So I had to get rid of it. Um... There are some other ones though. Maybe I ought to maybe I ought to do that. Maybe I ought to do an experiment. I would need to do it on a blog that has a lot of content on it though. Something that's like massive. We can do some speed tests on video. I don't know, that'd be kind of fun. Um I don't know you haven't been on I know you haven't been on Tax Broker in ages, but there hasn't been much work on there. I'm surprised that you are getting questions about it. Um that well I got that one today. And a lot of these questions are from like months. I'm like back 10 months to try to find questions because nobody has anything for me to answer. I'm just too good at... Re My videos are just cover everything. <laughs> so I'm patting myself on the back. But um, I got one today where they were asking um, if there hasn't been any work. Like traditionally, back when I was writing, this time frame is when um, there would be far less work on Textbroker. So, this could be just the seasonal lull. Um, try to get on as many teams and try to get as many direct order clients as possible because then it doesn't matter um, if there's work in textbook or not because most of those teams drop stuff at specific dates because they are ran by SEO management teams. And so, they have a schedule to keep two of their clients. So, they will drop thousands of articles at once, once a month, like clockwork. Uh, direct order clients, sometimes you can get some. I had one that used to give me five every morning, Monday through Friday. I had them for a year and a half. So if you can get some good stuff lined up, then it doesn't matter. But it's just getting to that point is when it's kind of tough. It took me it took me a year and a half. No, no, it took me a little over a year to quit the job at the school district. So it can be done. It just takes a lot of a lot of grinding, a lot of grinding. But I don't know. It's been a while since I was on Textbooker, so it, maybe they're tanking. That would suck. You have to get rid of all my videos. <laughs> but I wouldn't get any subscribers. <laughs> <coughs> the vast majority of the people who subscribe to my channel today are because of Textbooker videos. It is what it is. Um, been listening I just don't have a lot to say about blogging and writing articles uh yeah I was hoping to get more publishing stuff but I don't really have anything here to answer for publishing so I don't know maybe we should just call it good does Grammarly take over your keypad to the point that you can't turn it off or can you turn it off and on on and off at will Oh, your keypad. Yeah, like, when I responded to it, I was, I was still, that one, like, I don't, Grammarly has never taken over anything. <laughs> so I don't know what tool you're using, but it's not Grammarly. <laughs> um, it does do autocorrect, which is kind of cool. Like, when you're typing, it'll fix stuff as you're typing. If it detects that you fucked up a word, it'll fix it like as you're going so you don't have to go back and do it that is so cool but um the keypad no <laughs> not that i know of you can turn it on and off uh, the grammarly app 
uh, the Grammarly extension on Chrome does have the ability to turn it off and on for specific websites. So, if that's what you're ask, asking, Daniel Villarreal, I know I fucked that up, then there you go. God damn, like we're almost a year ago. See, where are all these people now? I see this town too small. That's going to get me dinged for DMZA. <laughs> no, copyright. That's where it is. Okay, well, you know what? We're not finding anything. It's been almost a, I'm almost to a year now. And, you know, that's going to be outdated shit anyway. So. Oh, well. Nobody just has anything they want to talk about. More questions they want to ask. I'm just too good at what I do, I guess. Oh, huh. yeah. We're not good enough, which is why I don't have enough people asking questions. <laughs> Depends on how you look at it. It's either half empty or half full. Now it's a broken glass. Then leave it alone. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. It's 8.45. It's been an hour and 45 minutes. We really, I guess we did go over quite a bit, so... Anywho, if uh, nobody has anything else to add, speak now forever, hold your peace. You have about 30 seconds before we call it a night because there's such a huge delay between what I say and what YouTube shows you. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, the first one? First one. Never, never the latter. Oh, <laughs> took me a second. <laughs> Dumb ass. All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Neo. That's appreciated. But I sometimes lean towards the latter. Um. Oh yeah, Alexander de Otter. I'm happy to see that in front of your videos are ads now. You deserve every penny. But, you know, that was 10 months ago. I don't get anything for the ads shown on my web on YouTube. That is YouTube saying they can go ahead and add ads because it's their platform. And then eventually, if I ever get enough watch time, I'll be able to earn some of that. But for now, no. I don't get anything from them. So... Alrighty. Um, have a good night, everyone. Insert Michael plugs here. <laughs> yeah, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Um, have a good evening, all. A Freelancer's Tale is available on paperback and ebook format on Amazon. The link is in the description down below. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can always hit me up on social media, on Twitter and Facebook, or use the contact form on RyerSanctuary.com's website. But for now, I think we're going to wrap this up because we really don't have much to say so um thank you guys for watching have a good evening i have fun like always and yes uh sam and i um we will be on crossing colorado's live stream tomorrow where we talk about uh time management <laughs> and how it impacts your health because in other words it's going to be a rag on michael morning <laughs> so yay um, but anyway, I will come up with uh, more interesting topics for next week, and uh, I've got some videos coming out, um, lots of writing going on, I am busy beyond belief, but if you guys have anything that you want me to cover, feel free to leave it on just about any video you come across, and uh, yeah, have a great Monday, let's uh, do some goodness this week, and uh, let's be awesome, love you guys. See you next time.